one of the biggest mistakes is thinking if you are new, even if you're not new, that content is the be all end all and the main thing you need to be focused on to be getting the word out and, and getting clients. The truth is content is something that can nurture people while you're not actually there so they can stalk you in their own time. However, it's not necessarily the converter. The converter has to be the connecting that you have with your followers. Hi there, and welcome to Share, Strategize, and Shine. I'm your host, Caroline Hull, a podcast strategist and CEO of Wild Home Podcasting. I've built my entire career through podcasts by sharing my experience, using strategic systems, and shining a light on the power of podcasting. If you are looking to cultivate leads for your membership, group program, or consulting services, I'm here to help you create a holistic and integrative podcast strategy that'll let your business thrive. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome back to Share, Strategize, and Shine. I am so excited to be bringing you a guest today to talk about something I'm super passionate, and that is content. But more specifically, I really wanted to talk about content that sells. Our guest today, I actually found on Instagram, I cannot remember what I was searching, but it was content related. And I came across one of her posts and just resonated so much with it. So I followed her, we connected, and the rest, as they say, is history. So I'm really excited to present to you Haley Rowe. She is a marketing sales coach and LinkedIn lead generation service provider. She helps coaches and podcasters build out their client attraction process, get more time back, and boost sales without being held back by social media overwhelm. She's been named as one of the top 25 coaches in Chicago and one of the top six business podcasts for health coaches. Since 2010, Haley has worked in the coaching industry and in business development marketing for startups. Her philosophy is that you can have an amazing service and impact to make, but without a strong mindset and sales and marketing plan, your business will remain a hobby. We talk deep about content in this episode and how to present content that's going to help you actually sell your services, whether that's online or on your podcast. And I even got her to give us a few tips on LinkedIn. So be sure to listen all the way through to the end for those wonderful tips. And so here is my conversation with Haley. Hi, Haley. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited to dig in with you today. Yeah, me too. Before we dive in, I'd love if you would just introduce yourself and talk a little bit about what you do and how you help people. Yes. Well, my name is Haley Rowe. I'm a marketing and sales coach and consultant and a LinkedIn lead gen service provider. And I work with business owners who are service-based business owners and really want to make an impact with their work. And I help them get more clients as well as expand their visibility online and or locally. And I do that either through general marketing or LinkedIn marketing, which is one of my favorites. So all sorts of things. I also have the Health Coach Nation podcast, which is for coaches who want to grow their business. That's awesome. So I found you because I was perusing, looking for posts on content, and I loved what you were sharing on your Instagram account. And we will make sure to link to that in the show notes because I think everybody needs to go and follow you because your message on the type of content we should be sharing is so, so great. So I would love to just start if you would talk about some of the mistakes that business owners make when they're creating content and posting it. Definitely. So one of the biggest mistakes is thinking if you are new, even if you're not new, that content is the be all end all and the main thing you need to be focused on to be getting the word out and, and getting clients. The truth is content is something that can nurture people while you're not actually there so they can stalk you in their own time. However, it's not necessarily the converter. The converter has to be the connecting that you have with your followers. So if they're not engaging with you on your content or your content's very tactical and just information-based, it's going to be tricky to lead into that next phase, which is inviting them to explore deeper. Because if they're not engaging with you and they're never raising their hand that they're interested, then the sales process will always be out of place. So the key thing with your content 
is you want to use it to shift beliefs. Mm. And in addition to giving value and tactical things, because usually the people who are following you, they're in a stage where they're either contemplating the change that you provide or they're researching it or they think it's not possible for them. So they're just kind of perusing and, and using your content to kind of see if it's possible. But yeah. I don't know about you, but I think that a lot of times we focus so much on giving tips. And this is what I do as well. I'm yes. totally guilty of this because it's yes. easy. That's what I love to talk about. And I can talk about it all day. But if I'm never thinking about my ideal client and what do they need to hear today to know it's possible for them to, or what do I want them to feel today that they're not feeling right now? Or what do I want them to do from this content instead of just giving more information? We have to be asking those three questions. What do I want them to feel, know, and do? And what are their biggest fears, objections, you know, hesitations, things that they're thinking about that you are almost avoiding? You have to talk about those things in your content. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. I think for when we talk about like podcast content, especially like I talk all the time about how those how-to episodes are not going to lead anybody to your products and services because you're basically telling them how to do the thing on their own. And we're not wanting to attract in general, right? Sometimes we do, but we're, in general, we're not trying to attract DIYers. We're trying to attract people who want our help, right? And so I think one of the things that holds people back from creating that kind of content you're talking about is it feels a little too salesy sometimes. How can we do that without feeling like we're stepping too far outside of our comfort zone. Does that make sense what I'm asking? Yeah, definitely it does. So I think it's like there's how to content, but there's also why. Like, why do we want to learn how to do this? And oh, why yeah. should we get support in doing this? And also creating the gap and, and helping educate them on like, what are the possible costs and mistakes that could go down if you don't know how to do this, right? So right. it's to say that you're always making your content like you don't want to make your content, quote unquote, disempowering. Like you don't want it to be like, if you don't hire a coach or if you don't hire me for these services, like you're going to be out of luck and just failing and blah, blah, blah. But you do want to be like, you know, let me share with you three common mistakes I see from people launching their podcast and help them see that gap, the cost of that gap. And then give them a solution to solve it that is maybe like a freebie or like a free call with you or something, but it allows right. you to explain how you can help them fill the gap with your services, right? right? So I think mistake type of content can be a good way to not be salesy, but to, to educate while still showing that your services are valuable. Also talking about a story, you can always, it's much, you don't, you're not being salesy when you share stories because we right. connect with, learn from them. So sharing a story about how you went from blank to blank or a client came to you feeling blank, blank, blank and struggling with blank, blank, blank. And through your framework, they were able to do X, Y, and Z and more of an inspirational story, showing them what's possible and demonstrative content. So like, even though you might not think like, Sometimes we think our content isn't quote unquote valuable if it's not how to content. But right. the truth is sometimes if you show, for example, the back end of your product or service, that is valuable because someone can see an example and they might think, oh, that I want to do that in my business or whatever. Yeah. And so a lot of people think it's not valuable, but it is. So there's value in talking about the why or a testimonial story or which, by the way, testimonial stories will get the least amount of engagement, I find, but oh. it will be the thing that people come on your discovery calls and say, I heard that podcast with your client, right. or I saw that post about your client, and that's why I'm here. So I'm sorry I'm going off on a tangent, but I want No, I love it. There is a thing called silent viewers, and usually your buyers will end up being the silent viewers who are like looking at those testimonials and things like that not engaging, but then they share that with you on, on their discovery call or in your webinar or whatnot. Yeah. I love that. I tell people all the time, like when you're doing your podcast episodes and you're talking about a topic, like see if there is a story that relates that you can weave in as you're recording the episode, because I think that's so powerful in saying, okay, not only am I talking about this thing, but I'm, I'm sharing 
how it actually worked, right? And that's what people want to hear. One yeah. bonus tip, sharing analogies. So in other words, rather than you just saying, yeah, you need a XYZ service for accountability, rather than just saying that, because that can sound kind of preachy, you could say, remember when you were young and your parents were teaching you, you know, that you need to brush your teeth. And at first you were like resisting it. You didn't know how to do it. And then they taught you to do it and they made you do it and they literally did it for you in your mouth. And then eventually you were just, this is a habit. You just, it's a part of you and you do it and you became the kind of person who brushes your teeth. This is kind of how accountability works with a coach. At first you're like, I can't stick with it. I don't really know what I'm doing. We show you how to do it. You become later the kind of person who can keep doing that yourself without even thinking about it. So like Good. notice how that's a, an example of I'm not being salesy or pushy, but I'm just showing like, here's an example. You know what I mean? Sharing what's possible, sharing what could be. I love that so much. Did you know that your podcast can be so much more than a hobby? It can be a way for you to attract your ideal client and establish yourself as an authority in your field, but you need a strategy. And that's why we've created the Strategic Podcast Academy, a monthly membership designed to help you build a strategy for your podcast so you can grow your business and get off the content creation hamster wheel. With support from myself and a community of like-minded podcasters, you will create a strategic plan for your podcast and start implementing impactful changes. During our time in the monthly membership, we're going to cover topics such as customer path planning, content planning for sales, podcast SEO, creating connection with your listeners, email marketing for your podcast, and so much more. So if you are an online business owner, coach, consultant, or service provider, and you're ready to have a podcast that supports your business, then the Strategic Podcast Academy is for you. Head to wildhomepodcasting.com slash membership to join today. I think one of the things too is, you know, we so often focus on the end result and you mentioned that connection piece, right? Like the people who are engaging, they're connecting with you. And I think that's because they feel seen in your content, right? Because you are talking about those mistakes they're making or those pain points they're experiencing. And you're saying, hey, I see you. I hear you. I've been there too. I find that that's really powerful as well when you're thinking about your content. Absolutely. I agree. I think too, it's very easy to... You want to use people's actual questions and words and things that they say, not what you think they need to hear or what you think, Right. you know, because you could probably look at all your past client onboarding documents or any market research calls you've had in the past, if you've had any, or forums where your ideal clients are commenting. And you can pick up a lot from that if you ever get stuck on what to talk about in your social media. But you want it to be like, wow, this person is in my head. They're saying the insecurities I have or they're saying right. the mission I have or whatever. Do you find that when people are, I'm just curious, I'm thinking about when I'm searching for something that I'm struggling with. Do you find that they're like actively seeking like the solution to the problem? Or do you think they're actually seeking to be seen like we've been talking about? Like if I'm just searching on social media for something, like, what is going to grab my attention more, do you think? Well, that's a good question. And I think it actually depends on the platform. So in other words, Ooh. like on Instagram, I'm usually looking for entertainment. I'm looking to let loose. I'm looking at like, yeah, yeah. feast over how interesting the comment <laughs> section is. Like, so I do think on Instagram, it is about like connecting and feeling heard in, in a sense of like their feelings and that kind of thing. But for example, on LinkedIn, I think it's more about like business and I'm looking to network and I'm looking to solve things and I'm looking to read an article that's going to help me today about my next job interview or whatever. And so, yeah. but usually you're right. People buy from people. And in today's world, it's more so about connection than it is just educational stuff and solution. You know, just here's the how to, because right. we have that everywhere. But what makes you different is the way that you connect with people. So you had mentioned earlier when you share this type of content and then like leading them into the opt-in or the service, how can you do that without being, okay, if you want to solve your problem, buy this thing. Like, do you have a better phrasing or approach to that kind of lead-in? 
Yeah. So it will come up really naturally a lot of the time if your content's good. So in other words, if you are, let me give you an example. I had a post one time and it was about how sometimes it's about like feeling indecisive in your business, about what's your next move. You get stuck in analysis paralysis, things like that. And so it's very natural to say, if you find yourself consistently like getting stuck and procrastinating and letting overwhelm run the show in your business, I have a free and that mm-hmm. decision about guide that will help you make your next business decision with confidence. And it was a free email freebie. So I'm a huge fan of doing it with email freebies. I think that that's a really good way to give them something of value up front. That should always be the call to action is how are you going to give value up front? And right. How do they get from you? And then the follow up from that is how did that go for you? Do you want to go deeper? So you need to have that little pre-step in your call to action that's like giving results ahead of time in some way, shape or form. And then it feels more natural. So, you know, it is going to feel like a transition statement where it's like, yeah, let's keep solving this. But I do think that you will become more natural at that as you, you know, develop your freebies and, and get in the flow of it. Absolutely. I really appreciate that advice because I think a lot of the podcasters that I work with are coming at it like they've been listening to news podcasts and they've been listening to very information heavy podcasts. And so I find that when they're kind of making this transition from I'm going to give all the information away in my podcast to I'm going to actually talk to and connect with my ideal client, like we've talked about in an engaging way, talking about their pain points. I find that that's where they kind of stumble because they're so used to being like, here's how to do the things and not quite used to that transition. So I really appreciate you sharing that example. Yeah. And it's actually of service. I think a lot of people think, oh, I'm asking. Yeah. I'm like begging them to get on my email list. No, it's like I have this thing in an exchange for your email address so you can get instant access to it. And it's giving something of value. I hope that your freebies. So don't hold back in your freebies, just a side note, like make it valuable. But at the same time, I think sometimes people perceive that as, oh, I'm making an ask, but it's really, I mean, you are giving something in exchange. Right. You're helping somebody, you know, in a way. So I love that. Before I let you go, I have to ask you about LinkedIn for a hot minute. So I love LinkedIn. I'm just recently diving into it. Do you have any quick tips for how we can share our podcasts on LinkedIn? Oh, that's a great question. So there's a couple ways. It's pretty much the same, though, as other platforms. So you might have a post. I, every week, I do a post that teases my podcast on LinkedIn. So in other words, yeah. I'll say, like, this week podcast just dropped, and then I share, you know, some curiosity-generating statements. Like, you're going to learn the number one reason why, blah, 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 or the three surprising ways you can blank. So I think that that's a good thing to have ready to go each week on LinkedIn to promote your podcast. You can also share clips and tag the guest on LinkedIn so that they could share with your audience. Definitely a good idea to tag. You can have an article that then ties into your podcast. So LinkedIn has an option where you could put like your blog posts or something, but make them a LinkedIn article. And so in that, if it would make sense to tie in, I actually too have a podcast that goes into more depth about this. So you can reference it there. Oh, yes. Usually. There's a, you could either put the link in the comment section or you can put it in the actual post. I know there's like a debacle about, <laughs> is it better to put it in the comment section so that it ranks better by the algorithm? That's more of a Facebook thing, I believe. But if you want to be really safe, you could do that on LinkedIn and just put the link to your podcast in the comments. But the last thing I'll say is too, you could have some curiosity generating posts that are like, pick a part of your podcast, a snippet or something. And either share a video or share a post that says like, you know, on my podcast this week, we talked about da, 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 and then try to lead it to, do you want the full episode or do you want the other reasons why people do right. XYZ or whatever? I love that. That is such, such great tips. And I really appreciate you sharing those. And where can everyone find you and connect with you? And if they want to learn more about content and LinkedIn, what can they do? Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you again for having me. You can get my free content roadmap that actually takes you through a process to simplify 30 days of content. That's intentional content at HaleyRow.com slash content hyphen roadmap. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Haley underscore Row. 
I have the Health Coach Nation podcast and the Marketing Hub Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash groups slash the Marketing Hub group for entrepreneurs and service providers who want to network and grow their business. And then HaleyRoad.com. I love it. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that we got to connect. Thank you. I love this conversation so much because you know how important and how much I talk about having aligned content. And I feel like it's bonus points if you can have aligned content that is not only really meeting your listeners where they are and what they need from you, but is also leading them to the things that you want them to buy into. And, you know, that's what our podcast is for. That's why it's here. That's why it exists is to help our business grow. And so I really hope this conversation helps you to think a little bit more strategically about the content that you're sharing everywhere and kind of put you in that mindset for actually creating content that's going to help you sell your memberships and your group programs. Be sure to connect with Haley because she is always posting really great stuff on Instagram and we will include all the links in the show notes. See you next week. Thank you so much for listening to Share, Strategize, and Shine. To give your own podcast some shine, download my free podcast content kit by heading to the link in the show notes. Be sure to leave a review and connect with me on Instagram for more podcast strategy insights. Until next week.